Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Cobb of ZL Performance, and September in the United States is Fall Prevention Month. I wanted to take a few of our videos this month and talk about the idea of improving balance and fall prevention from a brain-based perspective. If you're new to Z Health, we are a brain-based education company. We work with doctors, therapists, and coaches around the world. So if you are a movement professional and are interested in incorporating more neurology and neuroscience into what you're doing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out our free resources. All right, fall prevention, why should we care? Well, if you look at the statistics around falling, while it is an innocuous problem for many people, if you move well and you have an idea of how to fall safely, when we actually look at morbidity and mortality statistics around the world, falls are the second leading cause of death. It is a very, very big deal. Now, obviously most of us are familiar with the idea that as people get older, they are at more of a fall risk. And whenever they do fall, often we see fractures, hospitalizations, and then a progressive decline in function and often even people dying from them. So we actually spend a lot of time in the Z Health curriculum talking about many systems that are involved in maintaining balance in the real world. So what I want to do today is just discuss basics. We're in this t-shirt on purpose. It says, see well, balance well, move well, integrate well. This is actually the recipe, if you want to think about it, for improving balance in real world functional tasks. So whenever we deal with anyone that we are concerned about having a high fall risk, the first thing we do is we send them to their eye doctor, we send them to their ear doctor. Why? Because whenever we look at statistics, loss of vision and loss of hearing at any level can predispose people to falling. And I know that may sound obviously very basic, but you would be shocked over the years at how many people we have worked with that we asked them, hey, when was the last time you had an eye evaluation? When's the last time you had a hearing evaluation? And they'll say, well, I've never had one, or it's been 10 years, they've been wearing the same prescription glasses for 20 years. All of those small factors begin to add up in a very real way. So although we do a ton of vision training, we do a lot of auditory training, we work with the vestibular system in the health curriculum, you have to begin with the basics, all right? So make sure that at bare minimum that they are using and corrected visual devices if necessary. Again, I'm not saying that this is the best idea, but I'm saying if I'm concerned about someone falling, I might not have time to do three, six, nine, 12 months of vision training with them. We may need an immediate intervention to help them be a little bit more safe. And so think about that, get their eyes checked, and again, get their hearing checked. Whenever we talk about hearing, why would that matter in a world of falls? Well, it should be relatively obvious that you're beginning to lose the ability to notice where things are in the environment. You may miss someone telling you, hey, be careful, watch out. More importantly, the vestibular system and the auditory system share the same nerve. So when people are suffering from loss of auditory competency, meaning they're not able to hear as well at certain levels or certain decibel levels or certain frequencies, there is going to be a subsequent impact, maybe small, but can build up over time to the vestibular system as well because they share common anatomy, all right? So with that in mind, we then wanna talk about the movement side. Whenever you look at the most current research on movement and fall prevention, there are a couple of very important points that come up. Number one, we need people to be strong, but we need them to be strong in a specific way. When we look at kind of traditional strength training versus power training, what we're beginning to see is that the ability to exert power or force is more important in avoiding falls, which should make some sense. I'm walking along that trip, I need to be able to move quickly and stop myself. That is a power move as opposed to just a pure strength move. So if you are working with a population in which you think, hey, maybe these people are at fall risk, you need to start thinking about how to incorporate some more power-based exercises. It doesn't have to be you know, an Olympic snatch <laughs> or anything like that, but we do need to have people practice working forcefully and with speed, but do that in a safe way. The other thing that is absolutely tied into this is that while power and strength are important, agility may be even more important. So another key piece of helping people prevent falls is making sure that they are continually working on maintaining agility. So what I wanna to do today just to kind of wrap this up is I want to give you a couple of outside resources that you can go check out. Now we have what's called the Balance Gym. It's a product that does a lot of work with the eyes and the vestibular system and the body and the spine, trying to make sure that you are building a better map for movement. But when we look further afield, you look at some of the research, there is a system of exercises developed in New Zealand. It'll look very similar to some of the stuff that we're talking about, but it is called Otago, O-T-A-G-O. 
Otago Exercises. You can Google it. You can download 60, 70 page manuals for free because it was developed um, by a governmental agency, I believe, in an effort to help aging populations decrease fall risk. It has a great kind of series of basic exercises working on strength, working on stability, working on the visual system, the vestibular system, and then also adding in some what's called cognitive tasking as we move forward. That is a fantastic starting point. There are also a few other systems out there that focus on different agility patterns with the feet. Honestly, whenever you dig deeply into the research, it probably isn't super specific in terms of saying this is the best balance program because we can't find that right now because it's individualized. What we do know is that you need to have a training program that challenges the eyes, that challenges the inner ear, the balance system, that challenges your movement systems and your sensory systems, and then that forces you to put it all together in real functional activities. All right, so this is my little public service announcement for first week of September with regards to fall prevention. I know this is a lot of talking, but there are some actionable items in here. So get on Google, look at those different exercise programs, check out our balance gym, and then come back and we'll see you next week with some more information.